Hi, everybody, and welcome to uh, our webinar with Robin Spillane talking all about our gut. Welcome, Robin. Good evening, everyone. So this is a very important subject. Um, it is something that we're, uh, <laughs> we all have a gut, and I'm fascinated by the fact that it has a brain. So um, before we get into that, because I just so want to know what that means, um, could you tell us, every, tell myself and everybody about what you do, what you've been and your own journey? Gee, I, I was thinking about this today. Um, when I break down my life, um, I, I go back and I don't want to give too much information, but basically I started in business um, and then moved over to natural therapies because I realized it was my passion. I set up my own practice in Double Bay. I've been in Double Bay for 17 years, working in natural health uh, for 23, uh, teaching and uh, writing about it and I'm getting totally involved and just love it. Beautiful. Wow, long time. I mean, in the one place, which is a really good sign. It shows that there's a, a real kind of, um, you really love what you're doing and it's uh, obviously your passion. It is, absolutely. And even more so, you know, as time goes on, I mean, different section, sections of your life, different age groups, I guess you can say. Um, recently, I have learned quite a lot this year and I wouldn't have thought that I would learn much more, but I had my own journey of... Uh, uh, health, which was a, a bit out of my control, but um, it's good that uh, I'm just being able to, you know, move forward and um, and treat my gut, which is all part of the healing. No matter what health problem that you have, it's uh, important to treat the gut. Absolutely. Well, um, I'm, I'm my my gut is waiting to hear <laughs> what it all means. So please explain. Okay, tonight I thought I'd speak about um, something called SIBO. Now, people know about candida, which is normally something of, um, you know, the large bowel, going to the bathroom, um, that type of stuff, um, situation. What they don't realise is that sometimes that, that can back back up into the small intestine and cause bad bacteria there. So you might follow this candida diet for three months and then um, and you're thinking, how come I still feel, you know, the bloatedness, um, you know, fatigue, uh, irritable bowel, so many signs and symptoms. And think, I've gone without sugar now for three months. So SIBO is just a, an extension of that into the small intestine, which people don't get to hear that very much. So it gets a bit like, well, what are you talking about? But uh, bad bacteria there uh, needs to be treated differently. So what is the, so how does that happen? Like, how does it form? If you're eating well, how does it come about? Um, I know that people think that they do eat well, but mm. basically mm. everyone's in a rush and uh, really it's either, if it is a home-cooked meal, sometimes it still can be very quickly put together. It's not always like your, your vegetables and, you know, at least five different types and your lean protein. Um, really, if you really question people, they think that they have a healthy diet, but they really don't. And eventually it accumulates over time, which then you know affects all your digestion system. So what is it you mentioned there about cooking and the slow cooking? So what what is, um, well, further we will, I'd like to know what's the best way to look after your gut, but firstly tell us, maybe just explain about the brain part for the gut. Well, it's been a lot written about that, but basically it's all about the immune system when it comes to the gut. And uh, people, I don't think it, that's quite acknowledged that if you have bad bacteria there, that has an effect and then goes in the bloodstream and the brain. So the two of them together really are interactive. So if that's not working, uh, then nothing else in your body is. So if you don't have your brain working well, uh, that can have a huge effect. It's the same with your gut. Isn't that amazing? So it really impacts that it doesn't talk to each other. Because I remember I went to someone years ago who said to me that when I used to eat bread a lot when I was a kid, what happens is, which is quite common, you know, you get fed the grilled cheese on bread <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> anyway, but what happened is the bread actually coated your stomach. And he was saying that, in fact, because it cuts off the communication to the brain, 
you think that your digestion thinks that you're dead because your brain's not working and vice versa. There's a real connection. Oh, I think you're talking about the nutrient, nutrient sort of side oh, of it because right. that's, that's enough. There's so many different areas to it. Yeah. What you're actually speaking about is that that's um, lacking nutrients. So the brain's not being fed. So it keeps telling you to have more. So I think that you're coming from that point of view. Well, that's interesting. So it actually, so there's another part that it's also the brain because it understands the nutrients as well. So they really work hand in hand, don't they? Well, if it keeps, it's waiting for the right balance of uh, vitamins and minerals and amino acids. And if you're not getting that from your food, which really what nature has given us with um, our vegetables and our fruits, uh, you know, and getting all those vitamins and minerals and everything. And if the, if, if the brain sort of identifies and it's going, well, I'm not really getting that. And so then it tells you you're still hungry, which hence going on from there. Can you understand why people will also become overweight and heavy and bloated? Uh, and generally they just go, oh, I feel so uncomfortable and, uh, you know, distended stomachs. And yes. So that's how it does interact. So how is the best way then to, um, yeah, what's the best way to kind of treat that, keep your gut healthy and talk into your brain? Well, I think the best way, I think the first thing to do if you just want to manage it without, you know, visiting someone is really just follow a, a bit of food challenge where you're eating, um, you know, the food groups and vegetables and lean proteins, uh, avoiding dairy, um, avoiding the sugars and just follow that for a couple of weeks and, and see how your body responds and you will get sharper like the brain will definitely become more alert and uh and you know just uh, in general the bloatingness which should settle down just after doing that for a couple of weeks wow so it's it's so you were saying before that sometimes when people do that they still have issues so then how do you um, treat those issues if you're eating right you actually aren't having processed foods and sugars and, and dairy well you can go ahead and do um, a simple test there's either a breast te breath test or uh, a solution that you drink but you can do it from your own home you don't necessarily have to go and visit someone you can actually get a test done and uh, and then get the report back and then know exactly what you're treating and roughly how long you will treat that for as well. So what is it you're being tested for, that S-I-O-B? <laughs> bad bacteria. And from the um, breath test, uh, for instance, the methane, that will be tested what the levels are. And by, by knowing what the levels are, then you'll go, oh, you have got SIBO. Then you will need to do more of a food challenge than just the, uh, the ones that I've suggested because obviously there's a long list of things to do. And perhaps um, probably some herbal uh, solutions as well would be involved to kill off the bad bacteria. Yes, bacteria is an interesting thing, that uh, balance between whether it's sometimes you have a find that people query whether it's a virus or a bacteria or they come together or how do you work with viruses in that case? Well, it wouldn't be a virus when it, with the, the topic that we're talking about, SIBO, um, that's definitely a bacterial thing. Bacteria only, okay. I mean, viruses are normally something associated with um, when your immune system is compromised and feeling unwell, it could be a virus or a bacteria. But with SIBO, it's a bacteria. The bacteria cool. So, okay, so you have to eat well and then obviously seeing someone like yourself if um, you feel that it's chronic. Sometimes if you have really, I mean, what are the, the, uh, the things that happen when you have it? Um, well, when you have SIBO, fatigue I think is a huge one and uh, but definitely the bloatedness, a lot of flatulence, gas, however you want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. all have but when it's extreme uh, yes. it's like a heaviness and you, you just feel blah is the best way to say it but like a heavy feeling from the gut down the legs almost a very swollen feeling and uh, but the fatigue can really get to you and I think that it won't just go away you need to treat it 
and you need to treat it, um, you know, a probiotic. You can pop into your pharmacy or chemist and pick up a good probiotic. Do it that way. But the diet really is, is very important to do that. Yeah, it's funny it's because I think a lot of the time, I'm sure I had it many years ago when I was young, but you just kind of keep soldiering on and think it's, um, yeah, you don't really do anything about it. So I think it's great to know that you there is another treatment versus change your whole lifestyle, you know, because that's the hard thing is you go, I want to be healthy, but then the thought of being, you know, doing the full thing, I do find that your clients often go, Oh God, that's such an extreme to go from a normal everyday life to eating nothing. How do you talk them through that change? Well, really, I think it's more getting them to write down what they do eat. It's very important. But, but the thing is that when you've got SIBO, if, I mean, to me, if it doesn't you know, heal itself, within a couple of weeks. It's probably been going on for a long time. So I think peace of mind, just to know if you have a chest, at least you know, do I have it? Don't I have it? Or could it be something else? And I think the simplicity of that, you know, okay, this is what I'll do. And then you, then you on your road to feeling like you use yourself. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um the gut and how to have a healthy gut apart from the food is there anything else that you can do mentally or physical things versus eating or well i think that the stress can also be a big contributor and i don't think that that's and this again comes back for the brain and the gut as well mm. because um it, it just stress has such a huge effect so i think you know, having time to yourself. And I think the other big important thing is that putting some good probiotic into the body. But let's face it, most people start their day with a coffee and it's, you know, whether it's got a little sprinkle of sugar, you know, sort of in it or a bit of chocolate on top, uh, or I'll eat healthy, I'll have, um, you know, sort of uh, yogurt and, you know, maybe a breakfast cereal or something along the way. You know, there's mount, bound to be mountains of sugar, not necessarily a healthy choice. Um, and, uh, and then lunch, it's, again, it's, it tends to lack fibre and, uh, you know, sort of the vegetables. It'll have more maybe bread or anything, carbohydrate, you know. Yeah, and it goes on. That's how it goes on. So, and then with that change um, that you have with the, um, with the mental side of it, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the stress and how that actually impacts us physically. Okay. I'm just trying to think of simplicity to have an effect on that. You're releasing hormones, I guess would be, which affects the estrogen. And I don't want to get too complicated about that, but uh, you can create bad estrogen and then that, that gets cleansed through your gut. Like the estrogens with the fiber gets eliminated through the gut. So that's only one, one way of explaining it. That's interesting, isn't it? So the hormones is a big part. And let's explain that a little bit more about the hormone part. Okay, all right. Well, <laughs> women in particular, uh, you know, the cycle changes and uh, but the, you know, emptying your, going to the bathroom basically. Yeah, yeah cleansing out, um, you know, the excess estrogen. And uh, if your diet, and this is where it comes into account, if your diet's not correct, then you're not eliminating, you know, the bad estrogen. So that's still circulating around your body. Oh, and that's, that's, yeah, I know. It's, um, it, it is. And it's very important to have, uh, you know, foods that are rich in fibre, which again comes back to the foods that I was speaking about. And just um, what I'd also just like to talk about is the fact on the hormone level, what else has bad hormones uh, as far as food goes? Because I know that soy milk can be uh, have a, a tough estrogen or an estrogen that we don't need in it. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? Yeah, um, I don't want, it's too, I think it's more about the quality of what's out there. Oh, okay. And yeah. I think uh, with, when it comes to soy to me, and you'll find that most uh, places you do go to to get a coffee now, will always have bon soy. Now, the difference with bon soy is because it's crushed and it's not been heated and processed and, and changing the, the structure of what you're putting into your body. 
I agree with you. People definitely think that they're eating healthy. It's more how our foods are, are modified um, to package it to the general public. And yeah, yeah and you know, soy is a good example. I mean, some of the soy's out there, the quality, um, it's a wor it's concerning. It's concerning. It, is, it was funny, the, the soy for me, what happened was when I went to Canada and I couldn't get, I was a soya milk fanatic and then I went to Canada and I couldn't get it so I didn't have any and when I came back um, the second time I had my soy latte I broke out an eczema oh, and so you have an allergy to it yeah that what I was going to say not everyone can have soy yeah it was definitely like wow and I didn't realize I had another one and then my husband said to me maybe it's the soy and I was like oh no not the soy because of course you're just in denial <laughs> <laughs> I want my coffee. <laughs> I want my coffee. Um, so, yes, it has different effects. I love that. Well, look, I think um, at the moment, um, do we have any questions from our attendees? Anyone would like to ask a question or type a question to Robin about um, the treatment of looking after the gut? Would be fantastic. I'm just having a look here at the questions. I mean, I have one <laughs> while they're thinking of that, their questions. Um, the other thing is, how do you, um, if you wanted to get the test done, so you go and have to find out what, whether you've got it, um, how long usually does it take to get rid of when you, if you've got it? I, it very, I would say you should allow probably anything from a month to three months. Really? For a while? A degree because some people have had it for quite some time and is there any side effect when you do start doing the healing around it or clearing it out well the healing crisis i think that's well documented and again it will vary on the person but normally a typical response if you're killing off bad bacteria is that you can have you know the headaches and uh the, the tide might might increase a little bit but you know normally after a week or two that really starts to settle down now we've got uh, one question here. What are the best foods to reduce inflammation? Oh, gee, well, turmeric, I think, uh, is a, a great spice to always add to most things, which I think is fabulous because it's really out there now. And uh, I, I think that all oh, the best foods, I mean, to me, um, I'm just trying to uh, think. I mean, I mean, turmeric to me is, you know, the best for actually inflammation. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, eating greens and uh, I think that, that that's a really good way. And, you know, you, I love the grated carrot, putting it on everything. And again, it's all preparation, how you do your food. And you can't oh. go wrong with nature, with the uh, vegetables. So, well, look, here's another one. Same person. How can one increase alkaline levels? Uh, okay, well, number one, you'd have to uh, keep your alcohol reduced and uh, also uh, the caffeine. I wouldn't go over one a day. And uh, water is very important as well, the quality of water. I mean, I use something called Zazem, which is a, a filtering system, uh, which you can look on the internet at that. But uh, yeah, uh, water, you need to have alkalizing water. And then, uh, and of course, avoid the sugars and, uh, and measure it. Measure it every day. It's the 80 20 rule. It, don't, don't try to be perfect, I think. Yes. Love that, love that. We have another question. Uh, what fibre do you recommend to give maximum benefit? I always think you can't go wrong. You want to have about at least 20 to 25 grams of fibre. And I always figure if you put in two pieces of fruit and apple's got about five grams of fibre and uh, go through your fruit and I wouldn't go over a couple of slices of that. And then uh, if you do have bread and you're able to eat it and you don't have a wheat intolerance, you get a you know, couple of slices of that a day and then you've got about four to five grams there. So already very quickly, if you're having your fruit and veg and then you uh, and then calculating a couple of slices of bread, providing you don't have allergies. And uh, normally if you can calculate to get up to about 25 grams, I think that's the way to go. Oh, there you go. I'm so pleased you talk about bread. <laughs> well, we can't give up our breads because, I mean, carbohydrates break down so much quicker. 
and uh, go straight into the bloodstream and protein lasts longer. So you definitely need to have your carbs. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, the, the other one is uh, what fruits should you avoid? For SIBO, yep. if you're talking about, um, hmm. it's more the quantity, I would say. Okay. I think that's the most important part. I wouldn't go over, you know, sort of two pieces of fruit a day. Um, normally melons are the ones that, like when you're treating candida, I would recommend to stay away. So that's bacteria. So I would probably, and grapes, like something high in sugar. So probably the grapes, because it's grape season. And, uh, but there's so many others. I mean, we've got so many other fruits to have in this season, haven't we? But the ones that are very high in fruit and particularly grapes, I think I'd avoid that. Oh, there you go, the grapes. And the, um, and because, but are bananas high in sugar too, or are they? Not sugar, but nothing compared to the grapes. But I mean, it's only temporary. You wouldn't want to give them up forever. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> So have we got any other questions here? No, I think we're pretty good. I'm just having a look here, chat. We're pretty much, uh, anyone else have anything else to say? It's all very good. Was there anything else you'd like to talk about and share at all with us, Robin? I'd love, I'd love, um, I'd love you to talk about just a little bit because we've got about five, seven minutes about your own journey recently. And I know you've had a journey in your health. What was the thing through your health experience that you've learnt about health? You know, was there something that happened? Um, you know, what was your own internal kind of, um, wow, I, I've taken my health understanding to a whole other level without talking about it, but just, you know, what, what learning. I will say, I mean, I've always been interested in health, even though I worked in a business for a lot of years. But from a teenager, I've always been interested in health and looked after my body. I've exercised. I've mostly my whole life had a very good diet. You know, I have, you know, the cheat stuff, as I said, the 80 20 rule to me. But overall, I mean, and I don't mind saying out loud, um, I had breast cancer diagnosed last December, and that shocked me. That, that would happen but um, you know it's sort of uh, I realized that cancer doesn't discriminate it, uh, it sort of uh, it did, did really shock me why did this happen here I am giving mm. eyes however I will say that even though I was diagnosed and I had surgery to remove the lump then I had chemotherapy I had radiation therapy that I realized because I had looked after my body that I picked up really quickly and my hair returned very quickly as well. And uh, my energy, I sort of, everyone kept saying, I can't believe how well you've traveled through it. Um, but it was a big shock. It was a wake up call. Um, I think I'm em empathetic and compassionate, but I think I'm even more so now. And I definitely like to work with women that have been diagnosed with breast cancer because um, I think they're so confused with all the information that's thrown at them. And I just simplify it and let them talk and, you know, they're running ahead of themselves and try and get them to slow down. So I've learned a lot and it's been an amazing year for that. Oh, I just think it's such an incredible journey and gift that you have to give to other women because a lot of the time I know that when you're going through that, to have someone with your understanding and the experience will be so fantastic for women. So... Uh, for anyone out there who is looking for uh, someone to look after them during their journey and take them on that that um, health journey with them, Robin is the perfect person. And, uh, of course, with uh, other ailments, you know, if you feel that you have cyber as well, to um, see Robin. Um, well, thank you very much. And um, I do want to get you back again, I think, to really talk about your journey a bit more in detail. But I did want to just touch on it. because no, I think I've learned so enough. much. And if I can help anyone and I've learned so much with the different types of, um, of uh, breast cancer. Yes, yes and I think that's the thing of, of being able to talk about the process, what's happened in your learning and share that would be fantastic. So thank you Robin. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. And thanks to everyone for tuning in and um, we'll see you next week on our next webinar. Thanks Robin. Thank you, bye. Bye.